I will be shocked if this works. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a bit nervous. Well, smoke. <laughs> I can hear him perfectly. So last week we prepared the area ready for our new solar mounts and our new solar panels. Because we're adding panels and another frame to our existing system, this array is going to be built up of two different solar mounts and also two different types of panels. So we've just put together the new mount for the new panels. I'm going to be sad to see this go. We've been using it to play balls on. We haven't got anywhere else that's flat enough on the land, so perhaps when we've got a spare few minutes, Ricky, we're going to have to recreate this but fill it with sand. There's something about playing that game that always makes me feel Posh. Posh. Yeah, even though it's like the cheapest plastic balls. I think it's just because balls sounds a bit bougie. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't health and safety approved. What do you mean? <laughs> Tipping that weight like that. Huh. <laughs> I don't actually know what these weigh. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be using these, in Portugal they call them land seals, but they're basically curbs. We're going to be using these to fit the frames to and weigh everything down. So we need to try and position these now. And we've got a bit of a funny configuration because some of them we want to share between the different triangles to just join them lengthways. Some of them are going to be facing the opposite way. So we're going to just try and maneuver everything now awkwardly because they're pretty weighty and we'll just get it figured out on the fly as always <laughs> <laughs> going front first Ricky's just popped out to see if he can get hold of another ground rod because we can just foresee it's going to take ages to pull out the original one right now. Plus we are going to need another one for down in here when we do the electric so at that point we can utilise the original one. The stonework's coming along really nicely down here. Whenever he's had the chance Ricky's popped down and done a little bit more on it. Obviously as we're moving around the room we need to keep shifting the scaffold and one thing that is just in the way doesn't seem to matter where we go but every time the old windows are just in the place we need to go realistically they don't need to be stored down here anymore we want to go and put them somewhere else but the glass is really fragile and it's held in pretty precariously so i need to remove all of that just to make it safe
Well, that ended up being way more labor intensive than I anticipated. The stuff holding the glass in position, it seemed really flaky and powdery almost. So I thought once I got a chisel on it, it was just gonna, well, basically just lift off, but it's well and truly stuck in there. If you're wondering why I'm bothering doing all of this and going to the effort of taking the glass out, I want to use these in a future project because there's so much character in them. Plus the frames themselves are rock solid. So I just have to come up with which project is gonna be their perfect future life. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to Forio who we've partnered with again on this video. If you've heard me speak about this before, you'll already know how much I love it. But in case you haven't, this is the UFO3 by Forio Sweden and it's the newest member of the UFO collection. It's a deep hydration facial device and personally, I've never experienced anything as effective as this. From the first time I used it, my skin was noticeably more hydrated and it had a more youthful glow. I've now been using it for several months and the benefits have just kept coming. My skin's softer, my fine lines have continued to reduce and my overall complexion is much more even than it was before. It uses LED therapy to boost your own collagen production and the yellow LED is excellent at improving skin tone. I tend to get a lot of redness around my nose and my mouth but since I've been using this, I've noticed it's really improved. It's ever so simple to use. You just place on one of the masks, select the treatment that you'd like, either one of the presets that you can choose with the button here, or you can use the app and select a treatment that pairs perfectly with the mask that you're about to use. At the moment, it is gently warming my skin with the thermotherapy, which helps the mask ingredients to be absorbed deeply into my skin. The combination of the warmth, and the gentle massage pulsations feels extremely relaxing. This isn't easy to talk and do this at the same time. <laughs> At the end, I like to use the cool cryotherapy because it reduces inflammation and puffiness and it just generally tightens up your skin. It only takes two minutes, but for those two minutes, it does feel like you're at your own private little spa. If you want to treat your skin and experience the benefits of the UFO3, now's the perfect time. It's rarely on discount, but Froreo are offering our viewers 30% off when you use our link in the description. Plus, us, the first 50 people who use our code LIFE10 will receive a further 10% off. Believe me, your skin will thank you. just fitted the new fuse box to the mount and we've gone for a simple pre-wired fuse box this time round because I do not like having to do all of these tiny little fiddly wires and this comes already perfectly done by somebody in a factory. Everything's here that we need, fuses, kill switch, uh, lightning protection effectively like surge voltage protection. So this has now got really simple MC4 connectors on the bottom, so it can just plug the solar wires into here, outputs earth. So it's a really simple little thing. 
The only thing I may have to do is replace a couple of those fuses because it was a while ago that we planned this solar upgrade and we went through a couple of different configurations and I can't actually remember in the end if we need bigger fuses. So I'm gonna look at that later on this afternoon and potentially change them out later. But the objective of today is to try and get as many jobs done as possible that we can before we disconnect the other panels tomorrow because once they're disconnected we've obviously got no power going to recharge our batteries in the house so we want that period of being unplugged to be as short as possible so now that that's in we need to get our new wire run it through some conduit between the house and the new fuse box it was supposed to have come with a wire guide it's not but we found this method on the internet and basically involves a bag a piece of string and a hoover and you basically get the suction of the hoover on one end of the conduit get the bag on the other end and hopefully it's gonna snake its way through and then you're gonna have the piece of string as what would have been the wire guide I will be shocked if this works because we've got 50 meters <laughs> a conduit to go through. It's a lot, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Ready, Pop? Ready? Yep. Pulling this together. So we got stuck, but we've got it free. Victoria thinks a piece of tape is too long, so I'm going to shorten it down. Give it another go. I feel like this could be some sort of year three science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a drop an egg off a roof. All right, good. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Assume your stance. Brace, <laughs> okay. Perfectly. I can hear you perfectly. <laughs> Why does the squirrel pull on its back? This is just not dry. <laughs> right, take three. I'm feeling confident about this one. Okay. Whoa! You think it's there? <laughs> that was too easy. It was so fast. Oh, it's literally. Oh, it's <laughs> Don't go back in. Oh. Like that. Just like that. <laughs> Can't believe it worked. Are we doing both together or one at a time? Well, both together. Think about it. It's a lot to ask of that. If you did one at a time, yeah. How are you getting the string back through to pull the other one? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just <a> test. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. You ready? You're gonna have to go like pretty slowly. Oh, they're getting tight. Wait. Okay, go. Okay. It's really close. I'm out. <laughs> oh, 
was exhausting. Well, that was harder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, no, that last stretch was tough. Worst of it is, we're going to have to do it all again. What do you mean? Well, the conduit, we need to oh, change it. of course. So, yeah, for those of you wondering, are we putting this above ground? Are we going to bury it? We are going to bury it. However, the ground is so hard at the moment and to dig a trench right now, we'd have to do it by hand with hand tools. So the plan is wait until we've had some wet weather a bit further down the line. We've got a few jobs that we need a digger for. So potentially we're going to hire a digger for a day or two and dig a trench with that. But you're probably thinking as well, the conduit's wrong to be buried. Well, it is. This conduit that we got isn't the right conduit to be buried. Um, we couldn't get what we needed right now. So this is just the only conduit we could get from our local DIY store. So yeah, referencing back to what Victoria was saying, once that trench is dug, we're gonna have to take all of the wire out of this blue conduit, put it back through the correct conduit and then bury it. But that's a job to worry about down the line. I'm just glad we got it through now. just going through and crimping the end of these cables because it's so irritating when you're trying to take a cable into a fuse box, into a plug, wall socket, anything, and you just have the bare strands kind of like this and you're trying to squeeze it into a tight hole and what it ends up doing, it just ends up splaying out everywhere um, or it breaks strands off and plus it's just not the best connection. So crimping's just so easy. Cut back the amount you need, pop the correct fitting on that's now got the strands up to the end of that crimping tool and now you've just got a perfect connection super tight everything's nicely compacted and held in there so now you just slide that in you've not got to worry about the strands anymore nifty little thing very useful There we go. That's all of our rods cut ready for tomorrow. And I am gonna call it a day and go and get some rest and some beauty sleep because tomorrow is gonna to be a big day. We basically have to do everything from disconnecting the existing solar array, removing all those panels, disconnecting the fuse box, moving everything down, getting everything else set up, getting these fixed, getting the new panels in place. It's gonna be a long old day. And obviously I wanna try and get it all done as early as possible because that whole time we're doing this, our batteries aren't gonna be getting charged. So the quicker we can do it and get everything set up again, we can get those batteries charging again, hopefully in time to get them semi topped up for tomorrow evening. See you in the morning. Can I just, can I just come on? Just pick it up, yeah. Oh, okay. You clear? Yeah. So that's all the panels disconnected and now the house is running purely off of the battery. So time is of the essence. It's really overcast and cloudy this morning and it would be ideal if it could stay like this, but I'm skeptical if it's going to. We're looking. Are we good? We're good. Right. Got the pen? I have. I'll save your knees, old man. I'll do it. Old man. Come yeah, on. I'll, I'll take you off on the other. <laughs> one. 
Ricky's just gone to go and get the drill and also the vacuum cleaner ready to make the holes in the curbs for the mountain rods to go into. So while he's doing that, I'm going to try and get the ground rod into the ground, surprisingly enough. <laughs> When I thought about getting the ground rod into the solid earth, I did think it was going to be really tough just because you're just trying to drive it in so deep. However, I found a technique where you just use a tiny amount of water and you just drive it bit by bit in with your hand, not with a lot of force and just miraculously all the particle just move out of the way for the rod. So that's what I'm going to try. I am a bit sceptical though. It's hard to get stay in the same hole, like it's really shallow at the minute. I wonder where it's going. Mm -hmm. It's really, oh God, it's really going. Does it look straight? showed my scepticism because at least for the first bit it glided through the soil no problem whatsoever but then I did hit something and I needed the help of the hammer but I think even the water helped the hammer in as well so big thumbs up to that tip It's safe to say we've lost that lovely overcast weather we had this morning and it's turned into an absolute scorcher which is less than ideal for wiring up the solar panels. The threaded rod's been curing for about 45 minutes now so we are crossing everything that those are in the right place because if not we've got ourselves a big problem. Just got yours on. We're on. Okay. We're in. We're in. That's five. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it two for two. Are they going on okay? Yep. I just still can't believe that out of all of these different holes, everything lined up. I know, <laughs> it's a solar miracle. <laughs> As you can see, our new panels are bigger than our old ones. We really wanted to get the exact same panels, the same brand, the same power as these, but unfortunately, they've discontinued them. We specifically sought out these ones because they're a very, very similar voltage to these old ones. So we're not gonna have much inefficiencies at all in the system, so that's a bonus, but looks a little bit clunky. We've lined it up streamline on the bottom, but yeah, little and large. <laughs> oh, I think we can kiss goodbye to my optimistic thoughts from yesterday that we can hopefully get these all rigged up and get a bit of charge off them into the batteries because the sun's going down just as per usual. Everything takes a bit longer than you think it's going to, but it's fine. I've just checked the batteries. We're still well over 50%, we're on about just shy of 60%. So they'll last us through the night into tomorrow and then we can get them all turned on. So just covered all the panels in thick tarps just to make sure that they're not creating any energy when I need to put them all together. Also, if anybody's wondering, 
Safety first, these are all of our fuses disconnected, so not gonna be any live circuitry going. But right now I need to connect all of the panels up. I also need to make a couple of cables because I need to try and get all the way from that bottom end back up here to the fuse box. <laughs> so if you're wondering how we're wiring these up we're doing the old panels as one string the new panels as one string so one string in series the new string in series and then they're going to come together in parallel in the box we are losing light so we're going to carry on and do this and then tomorrow we'll be ready for our new power station opening <laughs> grand opening actually rained overnight and a little bit more this morning which completely caught us off guard because we haven't had any rain for months it's almost like it knew that we were preparing for the change of these seasons looking at how dark these clouds are I think we might actually be in danger of some more rain this afternoon <laughs> but Ricky is doing the final final checks triple checking everything all of the connections before the big turn on right I think we're good. <laughs> Definitely a bit nervous. I've triple checked everything and I know it's all fine. We're gonna leave the tarps on whilst I put the fuses back in. And then we're gonna slowly pull back the tarps on the old panels because I know they work okay. And I'll just go and triple check that we've got a reading inside. And then we'll pull back the new ones and then we'll see how it all works together. Right, first string. Working, 1.2 kilowatts. So cloudy, it's going up and down. But let's try the next ones. I could hear some beeping. Yeah, for some reason that's not reading. Everything looks as it should. We have double power. Double power, <laughs> technical. Yeah. So it was just a lag like you thought? Well, it must have been because it was just showing 3.4 kilowatts. Ooh, yeah. humble brag. <laughs> Are you just staring into the sun or it's just gone away? No, not quite. I'm looking at the clouds. Once that little one goes, we're going to have blue skies. So we should be able to get the batteries charged back up. Nice. It feels like a bit of an anticlimax. We've done all this work and just the impact this is going to have on how comfortable we can be here on the farm. And all I have to show for it, or to show you, is just a few numbers on a little LCD display. Well done, Power Ranger. Power <laughs> Ranger, the pink one, I hope. It was a bit anticlimactic, but the impact that this system's going to have on how we can actually live here isn't anticlimactic at all. We can boil the kettle, we can blow dry our hair, we can get a washing machine. How exciting! Washing machine, washing machine. Whoa, shim, shim. Tumble dry. <laughs> All right, that's a bit too far. <laughs>